In this video, we are going to continue our exploration of the E panel in 3D Coats user interface. I will hit the E key to bring the panel to me, and we will now focus on these different shape marquees that will allow us to make similar shapes that we might if we were in Photoshop, as an example. And there are new options available for rounded corners, rotation, and arrays that I will cover momentarily. The best way to demonstrate this is probably in the Sculpt workspace, where we have tools such as Cutoff and Box Hide that can help better demonstrate this functionality. Let's suppose that we want to create some type of hard surface object. One draw mode we could turn to is the Shapes draw mode, which allows us to import custom EPS files individually, or you can also import them as a separate folder. I'll hit the E key and then click on the shape draw mode right here. I wanted to show that first because I already have the panel open. You may have acquired a third party pack or perhaps illustrator files that you may have. You just need to export those as an EPS file instead of as an illustrator file. And you can bring them in one at a time by clicking on the plus icon here. If you want to quickly drop the usage of the shapes, you can click the X icon here or choose a different draw mode in the ePanel. Let's now begin with the demonstration. I'll now start with a Vox Hide tool, which I really like personally because it's a way to non-destructively cut or trim away portions of your model. And you can always go back and again, restore parts of it. And it allows you to create some really unique effects. I will hit the five key on my number pad to toggle into orthographic view or perspective. And you can also do that here in the upper right hand corner in the navigation bar, the little cube icon. So when you click on it, you can see I'm now in orthographic view. And you can go to your different views by hitting the different hotkeys or going here to this camera menu. Uh, so I'll just use hotkeys from now on. Let me go ahead and point out the corner radius option. If I hold the R key, I can move my cursor up to sharpen or move it downward in order to make it more rounded, as you see. So I can make a kind of an oval shape if I continue dragging it downward. Okay, now if I'm happy with this corner radius, all I need to do is release the R key. And now I can continue making my shape. I'm going to Hold the Alt key to rotate it. Hold the space bar to move it, just like I would in Photoshop. Okay, now I can release the stylus pressure and it's going to hide the selection. There is an option if I want to use on plane and that way I can adjust the plane depth on the model. I can adjust its position and set just how far it will hide. So I'll uncheck that for now and let's switch to a different draw mode by hitting the E key. This time I'm going to use a rectangular lasso and I will click and drag and I'll make it long enough and then hold the Alt key, rotate it and I tap the Alt key again so it stopped that rotation and then I can hold the space bar to move this into place and and hit the Alt key again to rotate it just a little bit more. Okay, so if I'm ready now, instead of just releasing the left mouse button, what I want to do is hold the Control key to invert the Vox Hide. So I want to unhide within this rectangle that I'm creating. Okay, so I'll hold the Control key and then release. And Shazam, that's it. So I hit the 5 key on the number pad to go into a perspective view. And you can see how Voxhide really lets you create some very interesting things. The five key on the number pad will go back to the side view. I can see the axis handles here, so I know I want to apply symmetry across the Z axis when I hit the S key. Now, what I'm going to do is still use the rectangular lasso, but this time, we are going to hold down the R key and drag downward to create rounded corners. So I will release the R key because that's the effect that I'm looking for. Now I can continue dragging 
to elongate this shape and then release the left mouse button and Shazam once again. So I hit the five key to come out of orthographic view. Okay, so let's put some shapes here in between these cuts. So again, orthographic view, and we can go to a different side view, and I'll do the same thing with the rectangular lasso for now. Actually, let's do this. Let's use the circle, and I'll drag here. That's not really what I wanted, so I will hold the space bar, try to center it up. And again, I will hold the control key while releasing pressure on the stylus. All right, and hit the five key, same view. I'll make another hole, space bar. To place these with more precision, we could use certain aids such as the 2D grid with snapping or the 3D grid snapping or use the measure tool, which also has snapping functionality. But for now, I'm just eyeballing it. Okay, so I'll release the space bar, release the left mouse button. Boom, now we have a hole. Let's go back to our e-panel. And when I select one of these shape marquees, you'll notice the edge radius option here. So I can reduce that if I want or increase it either way. All right, now let's go ahead and drag this rectangle out. We can make another rectangle here. This time, control key. Okay, let's go ahead and hit the E key again. And we will select the circle draw mode once more. Space bar, try to line it up. Control key. I'll go back into perspective view. And let's try to add some shapes here using the ability to create arrays with shape draw modes. So again, I will use the rectangular lasso once more. This time I want to use on plane functionality. So I'll right click, pick point and direction. I can walk this backward a little bit, but in order to do that, I need to go to sculpt tree and I can ghost this object, but the default action for ghosting is that it disables modification on the ghosted object. So what I need to do is tell 3D code, hey, forget that. Let's allow this to be worked on. What this ghosting will allow me to do is see the plane's position as I manually adjust it inwardly. When I right mouse button clicked on the surface, it not only pinned the plane on the surface, but it also changed the orientation based on the normal vector beneath my brush. In order to move the plane along the normal vector, I need to click the plus or the minus key on the number pad. Hitting the plus key will move it incrementally inwardly, whereas the minus key will bring it back towards the surface. In order to set the amount of each increment, you can adjust the movement step. I will now proceed to create a shape array right here. So I'll try to drag this out, pull the R key. If I want to make it rounded, and again, I can just drag down a little bit. If I'm happy with that, I can now create an array by hitting the desired number or combination of numbers above the letters on your keyboard, not on the number pad. If I want the number to be more than a single digit, all I have to do is hit the numbers in quick succession. For example, I will go ahead and just hit one, five. Now I can drag these out but I have too many. I'll try it again. And then I will hit six, drag those down. And I'm using my 3D connection device to rotate the model a little bit. Let me hit escape. Oops. But the nice thing is uh, I made a nice, Nice little cut there. I didn't really intend for that. It's kind of a happy accident, but that's fine. So I'll do this again. And 
Let me hit the five key on the number pad and see if that will help. Then five. Now hold down the control key. So that's the result. I'll hit the five key on the number pad. Come out of orthographic view. All right, moving on now to other workspaces. We can see that shape draw modes are also useful in other settings, not just for sculpting or painting. For example, there are times where you may want to use a brush draw mode to just select, just click to select a single island and maybe move it around, scale it, whatever. Or if you want to multi-select, and you can with a brush too, but you have to hold down the shift key and just multi-select like that. And it's not as fast as using a lasso or a rectangular selection. So, yeah. So let's hit control D. It's a universal combination in 3D coat for deselecting. And it's the same as in Photoshop. Let's switch to the Retopo workspace. Let's say I'm using the select mode here in vertex mode. I could use a brush to select. Just you know, brush select that way. Or I could uh, hit the E key, use a rectangular selection to do it. Hold down shift key. Let's skip now to the paint workspace. Most of these shape draw modes are going to be relatively self-explanatory, but let me try this one, plug in a lasso. I am using this just as I would in Photoshop. I can make it hard edge. It already has a little bit of rounded corners applied to it, but I can do the same thing that I did previously. I can hold the R key, drag down, and I can, on the fly, round the edges of the entire shape before I finish. All right, so if that's what I like right there, I can release the R key and then just finish the shape. Let's use the eraser. We will touch on the closed spline and draw mode because like I said, it is going to have its own video. It's just too extensive to go into in a video about the e-panel. When you click on that or hit the Q key, it will bring up this curves editor. And then that's just the beginning. You have a curves tree uh, hierarchy panel as well. Then you have a lot of different options here with sub menus. So yeah, we will definitely cover this in a separate video. And the last two remaining draw modes for us to explore, we will cover in the next video. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.